Welcome to today's episode of the Mindset Mentor Podcast. I'm your host, Rob Dial. If you have not yet done so, hit that subscribe button so that you never miss another podcast episode. And if you're out there and you love this podcast, please give us a rating and review however you listen to us. The more positive rating reviews that we get, the more that those platforms like Spotify and Apple Podcasts show this to other people who have never listened to it before and more people's lives can be impacted and this podcast can grow. So if you would do that, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Today, we're gonna to be talking about why now is the time to turn your life around. No matter where your life is, it could be terrible, it could be okay, it could be good. Now is the time to turn your life around and to find another level. And so I wanna tell you a story about myself. In 2010, uh, I remember being in Fort Lauderdale and I won't forget this moment for the rest of my life. I remember being in my one bedroom apartment. I had no furniture inside of the entire place. I had my mattress that was on the floor and I had a bunch of books that were in my living room. I remember sitting in my living room and I had almost lost my car. I was five months behind on my car payment. My business had just failed. My business was crushing it literally 12 months before and it failed and I had to shut it down and I was living off of pasta for two months. And I remember sitting there and thinking to myself, sitting on the floor of my one bedroom apartment in Fort Lauderdale, thinking to myself, I am the only one that can fix this. I remember first off being feeling like a victim and being like, why is this my life? How is it come? How did it come down to this? And I remember thinking to myself and literally looking in my one bedroom apartment being like, get your shit together. I remember that feeling of like, I am the only one that can fix this. I can play the victim card if I want to, but that's not gonna do anything for me. I'm the only one that can fix this. I can't rely on anybody to quote unquote fix me. And I had this feeling of like, I know my life is gonna be great. I know I'm going to do something amazing, but I don't know what to do, but I have to do it. And so I think that there's a point in your life where you can either decide to just take with whatever you have in your life and your life is your life and that's the way it's gonna be. Or you can say, I'm going to step in the driver's seat and I'm going to drive this thing. And it was at that point in time in my life that I realized that living your life is like being on a plane. And most people have the opportunity to step into the pilot seat of their life, but they just look out the window and they're just like, hmm, I wonder where we're gonna go. And so that was in 2000, you know, 2010. So you fast forward over a decade now and people see stuff like, oh, I've got millions of followers online. I have, you know, hundreds of millions of downloads of the podcast. I have, you know, a business with, you know, millions of dollars coming in and all this stuff. And people look at it. And I don't say that shit to brag. I don't want to, but none of it was actually easy. Like number one, none of it was easy. Number two, none of it actually truly matters in the first place. Like none of it, followers, money, all of those things, none of them actually matter. What matters is the journey that, ha that somebody has to go on. You know, it took full belief in myself in pushing through all of that stuff in order to get to where I am. So no matter where your life is, you know, if you're at the lowest of lows, I feel you. I've been there before. I know what it feels like. It friggin' sucks. I get it. But you don't have to be that way forever. If you're doing pretty good in life, maybe you're making 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars a year and you, you have a, a decent life, it could always be better. You could always create more. There's still another version of yourself. There's still another level to yourself. If you're out there and you listen to me make a couple hundred thousand or a couple million dollars a year, there's we have a broad range of spectrum of people who listen from you know people who are probably at the lowest of lows of life to really, really good right now. There is always another level of you. And that's the beautiful thing about life. And none of this has anything to do with how much money you make, how much money is your bank account, uh, how many followers you have, any of that. It's always... In order to grow in life, whatever that means for you, even if it's just another level of your relationship or another level of your bank account, another level of your business, another level of your content creation, it requires you to grow to grow. So no matter where your life is, I want you to see where you are as rock bottom. Like there's no lower than this. You're going to only get better and better. There's another level. And the level that you're currently at is the lowest level that you will ever be on. It might not be the lowest level you've ever been on because things could have been worse at one point in time, but it's the lowest level you'll ever be on. And I want you to look at your life. I remember hearing Joe Rogan talk about this as if you're the hero of your own story. Imagine that like right now, your life is a movie. 
You know, we all love like the comeback stories. We all love movies like The Pursuit of Happiness, where you see Will Smith and he's in the bath, the, the bathroom of the bus stop and he's crying and someone's trying to get into it and he's sleeping on the floor of the bathroom of a bus stop, a public restroom with his son and you see him crying and it's like you see him hit that rock bottom. And the audience is watching, we're watching and we feel for him and we're just like ready for the comeback. We're, we're, we're sitting there, we're rooting for him. I want you to imagine that where you are right now is your rock bottom. Like there's only other levels for you, higher levels, more expansive levels, better levels for you, but you have to be able to be the person, get yourself out of it. And imagine that there's an audience watching as if there's just a, a camera crew following you around and they're rooting for you and they want to see you win. They're watching every move that you make. How different would you act? What would your actions be like if there was thousands of people watching you at every single moment? Like just think about that for a second. If there were thousands of people watching you today, how would your actions have been different today and yesterday? Let's say yesterday, because it's an entire day. How would your actions have been different all of yesterday if you knew you were being watched? Like the Truman Show, thousands of people watching you all day, every day. You know, are you going to wake up in the morning when your alarm goes off? Or are you going to hit snooze? Are you going to go to the gym or are you going to continue to scroll on Instagram? Are you going to watch Netflix? Or are you going to put an extra two hours into your business uh, after putting the kids down for bed? Think about that for a second. Like how different would you act if you happen to know that there were thousands of people watching you right now at this moment, every single moment? And so when they see you and they're rooting for you and they're like, this is it. We're ready for the, we want the success story. We want the success story. Like, how are you going to make your life go from where you are, wherever that might be, to where it is that you could be? And there's people watching you and they're rooting for you and they want you to succeed and they want to see something amazing in your life. And they're like, let's go, dude, make something amazing of your life. How different would your actions be if that's what your life was? Because no one's going to come and save you in your life. It's your job. You're the CEO of your own life. I've said this so many times, but this story is just so potent. And I hear people share it all of the time. I remember my very first coach when I was 19 years old. If you've never heard me say this, if you've heard me say this a million times, you need to hear it over and over again. My very first coach when I was 19 years old, I worked with him for two and a half years. We had a weekly call every single week for two and a half years for an hour. And he taught me all kinds of amazing things. I don't remember any conversation except for one, one conversation. And it was this life-changing conversation for me. And I was late to the call. I hadn't done what my assignments were. I didn't do what I say I was going to do. And I had all of this laundry list of excuses to tell John, my coach, as to why I didn't hit my goals for the past week. And he said, you know what, Rob? I've got a question for you. He said, if you look at a business, and a business succeeds, whose fault is that? And I was like, well, you know, it's the owner, the employees, all that stuff. He said, yes, but who's at the top? Like, who's the person who has to move the people and help them get go from one place to another? I was like, the CEO. He said, so what you're telling me is that if a business is successful, it's the CEO's fault. And I was like, yeah, I guess that's what I'm saying. He goes, okay, if a business fails, whose fault is that? And I was like, that's also the CEO's fault. He said, okay, do you wanna know your problem? And I was like, uh, yeah, I guess I want to know my problem. He goes, your problem is that you're not living your life like the CEO of your life. You're trying to blame everybody else. If a business fails, it's the CEO's fault. If a business succeeds, it's also the CEO's fault. So if you get to the end of your life and you're not where you want to be and you didn't, you know, you're on your deathbed at 90 years old and you're looking back and you're like, damn it, I didn't do what I could have done. I didn't bring the love that I could have. I didn't make the money that I could have. I didn't you know, have the impact on the world that I could have. I didn't have the fun I could have. I didn't travel the world that I could have. Whose fault is that? And I was like, I guess it's my fault. He goes, yes. But if you did every single thing that you wanted to, if you created the life that you wanted to, if you had the love that you wanted to, you made the money that you wanted to, created the business that you wanted to, had an impact on the world that you wanted to, whose fault is that? And I was like, it would be my fault. He goes, so the problem is you're trying to blame everybody else but yourself. He goes, you need to be the CEO of your life. And it was like, that conversation woke me up. And I was like, holy shit. I'm so good at making excuses as to why I don't have the life that I want. I'm blaming everybody else but myself. And at that point in time, I really switched to, okay, 
Everything is my fault and I'm going to make everything my fault. And if I look through that viewpoint, I looked around my, you know, my apartment complex at the time and where I lived and the car that I drove, my crappy Nissan Sentra that was falling apart. And I was like, oh, I can't afford something better because it's my fault. Oh, my business is not where I want it to be because it's my fault. My mindset is not where I want it to be because it's my fault. My body is not where I want it to be because it's my fault. And things just started shifting at that point in time. And I stopped blaming anything externally outside of me. And so what you have to do is make a change right now. You have to look, if you notice the past few episodes, now that we're going into a new year, have been kind of along the same lines. And it's the reason why is because I really want to wake you up to creating the life that you want to and use this new year as the catalyst to do so. I really want you to change your life. I want you to create the life that you want to. You know, doesn't matter what it is that you want your life to look like. I don't want you to get to the end of your life and wish that it would have been different and wish that you wouldn't have, you would have found your potential, but you didn't because you're too busy on Netflix. You're too busy on Instagram. You're too busy in your own thoughts and feelings and fears and limiting beliefs. I want you to create something amazing of your life, but I can't make you do it. You've got to be the person to do it. And so how different would your life be right now? If there were thousands of people watching you being like, come on, man, just fucking do it. Don't, don't go back on an Instagram. Don't go back in a Netflix. Don't think about your fears. Don't think about your limiting beliefs. Like now's the time you've got to go. There's people rooting for you. How different would your actions be every single day? Hey, don't hit that. Oh, come on, man. Don't hit that snooze button again. Oh, come on, man. Don't, don't go telling yourself you're not good enough again. Oh, come on, man. Don't tell yourself that you, that you can't do this. You've got to start like how different would it be if you knew there was an entire crowd watching every single moment of your life, like the Truman show, it would be vastly different. So why don't you start acting like you're the hero of your own story? Why don't you start acting like there is no one that's going to save you? Why don't you start acting like today is the day that your life's going to change? Cause the choice is yours. If you want to stay in bed, you can stay in bed. But if you want to create the life that you want to, you can also get up and do something. If you want to create greatness, you have to be the, only, the hero of your own story. The time is now. So I hope you choose greatness. So that's what I got for you for today's episode. If you love this episode, please share it on your Instagram stories and tag me in at Rob Dial Jr., R-O-B-D-I-A-L-J-R. Also, if you're listening to this before the end of the year, before January 1st, and you're interested in making January the best January you've ever had in creating 2023 into the best year that you've ever had. And you want to join in on my 31 day challenge that goes January 1st to January 31st. Go to limitless31.com. It is a limitless challenge. I'm going to be coaching you every single day. I'm going to be giving you daily meditation. Or I'm going to give you, be giving you daily journaling exercises. I'm going to be giving you guided meditations. I'm going to be there coaching you, answer your questions, helping you as much as possible. And you're going to be joining a community of people to hold you accountable. There's going to be hundreds of people doing the exact same challenge with you. So if you want to make it the best year of your life, there's going to be seven different habits that you need to hit every single day for throughout these 31 days so that you can create the momentum that you need to into the year. So if you want to join us, myself, coaching you, and hundreds of other people who are going to be going through it with you, go to Limitless. 31.com. Once again, limitless31.com. There's a video there that has all of the information that you need. Join us. I would love to see you there. And I'm going to leave the same way I leave you every single episode. Make it your mission to make someone else's day better. I appreciate you. And I hope that you have an amazing day.